Okay, looks like we are indeed up running and live from Dubai. A very good evening or afternoon or even morning, wherever you are. Phil Pendlebury here, and I hope you're having a super mega large day. For those of you from the Middle East, Assalamu Alaikum, Mahaba, good to have you with us too. So, as mentioned in the title, today we're going to have a little bit of a more detailed look at ARA, uh, including WaveLab, and I'm going to show you through some of the features that are available as an ARA process with WaveLab. And I'm going to actually explain how ARA works and how we get it working, so it kind of applies to quite a lot of the, um, the extensions, the ARA extensions. So what is ARA? Okay, so ARA stands for Audio Random Access. And basically, this was a technology developed by Presonus and Selimony a little while ago. And it's a way of passing communication between the ARA extension, i.e. WaveLab spectral layers, into the DAW host, which in our case today will be Nuendo. And yeah, there's some pretty stunning features available depending on, you know, you've seen um, my past videos on spectral layers. And uh, now we have, with the new WaveLab 12, of course, we have WaveLab available as an RR extension within Nuendo. So my summary of what is ARA, to be honest, it behaves pretty much like a plug-in on steroids. Um, you can insert it onto certain audio tracks and, you know, do processes, mess around, and then pass it all back to the door host, in, in our case, Nuendo. So I think that's really the summary, that's enough of the summary. What we need to do is actually get into a project. And I'm going to explain how it works in a generic sense, so this would be with pretty much any extension. But today we're going to use WaveLab as, as an example. And then what we're going to do is I'm actually going to show you through pretty much all, hopefully, if we've got time. So we've got, you know, limited time, as you know. So hopefully, if we've got time, I'm going to go through pretty much all of the features that are available as an ARA process with WaveLab. So, yeah, I think that sums it up pretty much. I uh, hope you're all doing well, and please hang around. We're going to get headphones on um, for this one because we will be listening to some audio, although it won't be anything too critical. But uh, for me, yeah, of course, I need headphones so that I can hear what's going on for you guys if you're just listening on speakers. That's all fine. So I think that's about it. I'm not sure if there's anything else we need to mention. Yeah, if there is... It'll come to me while we're uh, while we're streaming. So let's move into it. So here we are in one of my sound design projects, actually used for um, a past uh, video that we did all about sound design. There's a little video up in the corner here, uh, which is not really important. So we're not going to really be looking at that today, but it is part of the project. Um, headphones on for me, and. What we'll do first is we're going to have a look at kind of the basic ARA controls. Uh, and it's important to understand how this works, otherwise things can get overly complex. Um, the other thing would be to explain how are ARA extensions installed. Well, basically, when you install WaveLab or Spectral Layers, for example, um, there's an extension ex installed into the VST3 plugin area. Uh, where it is in the folder hierarchy depends on the application, but uh, not super important, but good to know that, you know, that's where you'll find them. So, yeah, let's, uh, let me turn the camera off and we will have a quick look. So, Here's the project. Let's have a quick listen first, just to make sure the audio is working. Texas Airways Flight 123 is boarding now at gate number two. All passengers, please like this live stream and then proceed to the departure gate. All 
right, so there's, there's the project. Again, like I said, it's not really vital, that, but I just thought, why not listen to it instead of just listening to little bits. So with a normal plugin, you would, for instance, let's say we're going to insert a plugin on this voiceover part here. You'd bring up your mixer and you would insert it, or you would send it on, you know, send to an FX um, area on the mixer, or you would, you know, send that to a group and then insert the plugin. But Ara works a little bit differently. Um, there's a few ways to access it, but I'm going to show you the first one now, which would be up on the audio menu. So we make sure we've got the part selected that we're going to work on. So let's have a look at this uh, voice here. That's the voiceover part. Let's just solo that. Smegville Airways Flight 123 is boarding now at gate number two. All passengers, please like this live stream and then proceed. All right, so we've got the part selected. And then we go up to the menu and we go to audio extensions and you can see the extensions there and there's a couple of options underneath as well so if we wanted to insert wavelab onto this particular part uh, we would literally just go up there like i just showed you we go to audio extensions wavelab ara and you'll see now that wavelab comes up as a process in the center, we can zoom into that and you can see that you've got the full controls and we've got various tabs in WaveLab, which some of you might be familiar with if you've already uh, used WaveLab. Obviously not everything, we don't have montage and there's various other things, but there's a lot of the features that are available and we'll go through those in a minute, but I just want to kind of show you the, the basics of how it works. So there's two options. Let's say we've had a little mess around and we've done whatever we, we're going to do. And um, you'll see, if I double click the part, you'll see that WaveLab comes up instead of, for example, if I double click that part, you'll see the standard audio. Let's zoom out again so that you can see what I did there just to be sure. So double clicking a standard part brings up the audio editor and or the sample editor and double clicking a part with an ARA extension brings up the ARA extension. So that's the basics. You can also use it in the bottom area, but we'll get to that in a second. And the other option here, if you look back over at the menu, you'll see we've got these other options, make extension permanent and remove extension from selected events. So what do those mean? Okay, so make extension permanent will make any treatment that you've done permanent to the event you're working on and then it removes the ARA extension. So it's a bit like doing um, a render in place with a plugin, I guess. And a clip for the new file is added to the pool and the original event is replaced by a new event playing the new clip. And this is useful because it saves on memory and reduces the size of the project file as well. Um, if you want to, in this case, this is what we're going to do right now. If you want to remove that without doing anything, let's say we've made some processing and we decide we don't like it, then you just make sure once again that you've got it selected. We'll go up to the menu. We'll go to audio extensions, remove extension. And now you'll see that when I click that, we are now bringing up the sample editor as you would with any normal file. So, all right, so that's, that's the basics. There's not a lot to the controls. It's basically select your part, get the extension that you want to use, and then you can either do all your processing and then make it permanent, which burns it into that file, or you can just remove it and go back to how you were originally. So let's move on. Let's, uh, let's apply a little bit of ARA magic to this, um, this particular part that we were looking at. So we select the part. Now, you, you remember just now we were bringing this up 
from the menu, but there is other ways to do this. And what you can do is we can use the secondary click function, which I have applied, I have uh, assigned to button on my mouse. So the secondary click brings you the first, the main click you can have for the toolbar and so on, um, the right click, and the secondary click is like this one here, brings up this menu. So I think we can zoom in there, although you can't actually see the part there once we're zoomed in. Maybe if I uh, pull down this video marker a little bit and then you can see the part. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So I'm going to do it that way. So we're going to secondary click and we're going to go on the menu here. We're going to go to extensions and you can see you've got the same thing that appeared in the menu, uh, the main menu system. So let's go Wave Lab Ara, and there she is. And now we can, well, like I said, we're not going to actually process in anything for a moment. So we'll just close that window down. And if we zoom right in now, let's do a mega zoom. No, that's not going to work. If we zoom right in, let's try it this way. You can see there's a little icon there that shows that the ARA extension is active on that particular part. So if we double click that part now, we'll get WaveLab back. And the other thing which we'll need to zoom out for here is although you can't do everything that I've just done, uh, what we can do is actually remove the extension by using the info line. So again, if we zoom out, you can look up at the top here for the uh, info line in your endo, and you can see that the extension is mentioned there. So we can either, again, make it permanent, or we can select a different one, or we can do no extension, and that would remove it completely. So that's another, it's just useful to have all these kind of little, um, it's useful to have all these little shortcuts in your head, uh, because going up to the top menu can sometimes be, you know, a little bit, oh, we've got to move all the way over there, especially for me on this great big screen. So let's zoom back in. And we will now remove the extension by using the right, the secondary menu. So extensions, remove extension from selected events. Okay. So that's how to add and remove and what various things do. And we can also do this with multiple parts at once. So if we go, let's say, select two, those two parts there now. And again, secondary click menu, extensions, Wave Labara. And again, we'll just close that down. But you can see now, if you have a close look, you can see that the icon is active on both of those parts. And if I click them, the part comes up within the WaveLab ARA extension. So we can now do the same thing. We'll just select them both and extensions, remove from selected events. And finally, before we kind of move on, uh, let's just bring the inspector open. And again, you're going to need to see the whole screen here. Uh, we can add an RR extension to the whole track. So for example, let's imagine that we had something like this. And what you'll do is you'll go over here to the inspector and you'll see there it says no extension. And we can go down and we can go WaveLab ARA. And now that is active on the entire part. And there are the two parts, which of course are identical. So we'll remove that. And that's removed them from the entire track. And the other thing that's worth pointing out here is that if you've added, if you've added, um, 
the extension to a track like we just did there, uh, you can't remove it from an individual part. So be a little bit careful with using ex an extension on an in entire track. All right. Finally, I think on this little bit here, I don't use it much, but the two buttons to remove an, an event and add an event. So you probably saw those. Again, we'll just quickly, uh, quickly add the extension on again. And you'll see these two buttons here. Now these latch, so you've got to be a bit careful with them. Make sure that you, you, know, you have them on or off and that you check that they're both off when you're finished. And you'll see that uh, we can pull that down a little bit for a second. You'll see that if I click on remove event and hover over the part, that the cursor is changing to a negative. And the same goes the other way around. If I click add event, you'll see that the cursor is changing to a plus. However, it doesn't actually do anything in this particular case. So, and again, I need to remember to turn it off. If we want to use those buttons, which can be useful, we have to open the error extension in the lower zone. Okay, so now the lower zone, you've probably noticed from all my videos, I very, very rarely use it. I have um, some workspaces with a mixer set up at the bottom and in other workspaces, I have the project at the bottom and the mixer at the top and, and so on. Uh, so I very, very rarely use the lower area, but I know a lot of people do. So it's probably worth just showing how this works. So let's put this into the lower zone, like so. And now you can see we've got the ARA extension in the lower zone of Nuendo. And of course, we can do all, all the usual same things that we did in the little window. However, the difference now is if we go to, for example, add event, we click that, it's highlighted. And then we go here, we'll click that, and you'll see that that part, and now that part, and that part, are all added to that ARA process. And if you look down at the bottom, you can see that they're all there. And if we want to remove the events, we just click that, 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 and we're back to where we were. We can even remove the actual initial event this way. But of course, remember that you must deselect this, otherwise you'll still have that cursor hanging around and it can get confusing. I personally, like I said, prefer to have the lower zone switched off and just have everything like this. So for the remainder of this uh, video, I'll be using the, the window, this, this area here. And, and that means also that I can zoom in on it nicely, nice and easily uh, without too much messing around. Okay, so we'll get the camera off. I'm gonna show you a very quick example. Um, Let's just bear in mind that there are some controls here um, on the screen. Smedville Airways Flight 1. But you can use all of Nuendo's standard, standard uh, transport controls, which is really useful. So this is different from having the whole process as if it was you know, in a separate uh, window. So for example, again, we are going to zoom out a little bit. If you look at the loop that I've got set here, if I de define a little loop area here, you can see that that has now become a loop within Nuendo itself. And if I play that, I'll do it like this. Like this live stream, and then Smedville Airways flight one two. Just wait till we get to the loop. Recording now at gate number two. All passengers, please. All passengers, please. All passengers, please. You get the idea. So the controls all work quite intuitively. And just to kind of summarize that entire section, um, let's just add a quick bleep onto this and show you how it works. So let's find uh, something like a number. Flight 123 is boarding now. 123. It's flight 123. All right, so we'll take 123. Let's say it's illegal to say any numbers in, in your country. 
Uh, well, you never know. <laughs> uh, so there's one, two, three. So if we now go over to the insert section and we'll just insert a bleep, uh, I'll just use the default one. So there it is, apply. And now we'll listen to the whole thing. Medford Airways flight three is boarding now at gate number two. Medford Airways flight three is boarding. All right, and let's say we, we're happy with that and that's exactly how we want it. Now, don't forget, you can still run the entire project with that ARA process. Medford Airways flight three is boarding now at gate number two. ARA is still, the extension is still inserted there. So we, we now have the two choices that I mentioned earlier on, and that would be to bring up the thing here and either remove it in completely or make the extension permanent. And if you make it permanent, that part will be replaced by a processed part. All right? So I think that's... Um, that's pretty straightforward. So we'll remove it. And now you'll notice that everything is back to normal. Smegford Airways flight 123 is boarding now at gate number two. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So now that we've covered all the basics, we can have a slightly more detailed look at some of the things that WaveLab itself can do as an ARA extension. So once again, let's bring that up, add WaveLab. And I really like having that on the right, you know, the secondary click menu. It's really useful here. Um, I don't have the top menu displaying in Nuendo or Cubase. Uh, it makes the, the screen look a lot cleaner. Um, you've probably seen in previous videos, but if you haven't, it's quite easy to do this. So we'll just quickly zoom out. And if we go up to the top here, um, you can see I've got no menu there at all. And what you do is you right click show menu bar or disable it, but you can still see it. You can still bring it up um, by using the Alt key. And I have the Alt key on a mouse. So all I have to do is go up there, press Alt, and there's the menu. Once you've picked you know, whatever you're gonna do, it'll go away again. Right, let's continue. So, Bringing up WaveLab in ARA. Um, I showed you about the loop just now. We can also zoom in and out, as you can, you know, with, but in WaveLab, it's very nice, these little buttons, little rollers here that do various things. They can zoom in the, the whole, you know, scale of the wave file, and you can also zoom in to the entire file. So let's pull that over a little bit. And I just want to quickly show you a couple of the display things that we've got here. So first of all, the meter scale. So if we get the camera off, so you can see this clearly, and you can see we've got the meters here on the left-hand side, and these aren't moving meters. But they do kind of align with the, the file, you know, the waveform itself. And there's a few options there. So we can right click and we can change that to various things. And of course, you can save your defaults as well. So at the moment, we're in dB, uh, but we can just change that to a percent. So 100% at the top, zero in the middle, and normalized. 16-bit range, 24-bit range, which I don't see a lot of people would ever use that, but we'll stick to dB. And another thing that I find really handy is this. It's the ruler at the top. And again, this is something that we've kind of gone through ways of trying to do this uh, within Uendo. I do have another video on that. Uh, but if we right click on the ruler, you can change to various options. So we've got time code, we've got clock, which we'll leave it at. We've got samples, bars and beats, and the file size, which is super interesting. So it's showing you, you know, the actual size of the file as it progresses. 
Um, again, one of those things that may or may not be useful. We can show a grid. I don't know if you can see the vague lines there. So if we go back to time code, you can see that we've got a grid and we've got a line there on every second. And we can change the time format itself with a, a dialog box there. But the thing I find really useful, let's go back to clock. So we've got the seconds there. And what I find really useful, you can see in my overall project that I have an offset at the beginning. So I've got minus five bars. So zero, my first kind of bar here is at zero seconds. Um, so what we can do is you can see that the part itself starts at zero. And what we can do is to right click and we can go set rulers origin at cursor or start a file or BWF reference. So if we go to start a file and you'll now see that that ruler is giving us right from the start of that particular file that we're working on has been set to zero. So for example, if we go to this other part here and add another version of WaveLab to that, that's this one here, we can then right click and we can do that. And now we've got the ruler starting at zero on both of those parts, even though it would never be the case within uh, Nuendo itself. So let's just zoom in on that so you can see it nice and clearly. Okay, and then we can pull this back to the proper place. And so there you can see we've got the little grid lines down there. Hopefully this is clear. And the second part, which is actually much further across in the project, is also showing zero. So it gives you an ability to really be detailed with timings. And we can also snap the cursor as well to those positions. So that's uh, super neat. So what I'm going to do again, we'll go back out of that and we're now going to remove the second part. And I'm going to actually delete that because we're not going to use it. Okay, so I think now what we can do is we can go through um, as many of the features that we have time for um, to, to show what can be done uh, within the WaveLab extension itself. Now we've been through all the basics of ARA and I think hopefully <laughs> we've covered everything there and although it probably, you know, seem to take a bit of time for those of you that are already experienced with the ARA process thing. Um, hopefully this little video or the first 25, 30 minutes of it will now be something that we can, people can refer to um, when they're actually using a ARA process of any kind. So back to the magic of WaveLab, camera off, and we'll double click and let's start from the left obviously we've got the view here we've got the ability to add various kinds of markers we can zoom in and out so we can you know there's controls to do that here you can get very very precise with all these um probably don't need to go into those here are the the various options are for moving around markers. We don't have any at the moment, so that's not going to really do anything apart from at the beginning and at the end. But if we went to insert, we could, for example, let's say there's a little part there, we could insert a generic marker. We could insert a loop start and a loop end. But we'll get to that in a second. Let's just put a generic marker here and another generic marker there. Yep, and now we can go back to view and you'll see that in the little marker section or the cursor section here, that we can move the cursor from one marker to another very, very quickly. Um, the scrolling, 
Yep. Well, that pretty much speaks for itself. And of course, like Cubase and Nuendo, we also have the ability to change the way that this, the cursor moves. So let's just play and you'll see how that works. So I've, I've stretched the file a little bit. And at the moment, we're in static view. Airways flight one, two, three is boarding now at gate number two. So nothing changes when it moves off the page. If we change to view follows cursor, Smegvin Airways Flight 123 is boarding now at gate number 2. All passengers, please like this live stream. And we can change to scroll view. Smegvin Airways Flight 123 is boarding now at gate number 2. All passengers, please like this live stream. So generally view follows cursor would be um, the one to use, I think, on this, although the scroll view... Live stream, and then proceed to the... Pretty nice. It's, it's just the same with all these applications that when you do that kind of scrolling, you tend to find that it looks a little bit jerky. And I do have a very powerful graphics card for what it's worth. And the next thing we've got is snapshots, which enables you to take a snapshot of your view, including, you know, where your cursor is and the zoom and so on. And then we have a rebuild display in case anything goes wrong here with the display and it will rebuild the waveform for you. Magic. Actually, before we move out of the view area, there's just a couple more things I've just realized that we missed earlier on. And we're not going to spend a lot of time on these, but the much loved rainbow view. So again, just to go back, we've got the WaveLab is inserted as an arrow process on this VO, so we'll just solo that. Smegville Airways. And bring up WaveLab again. And this is the standard view that we're looking at now, but we also have a few other views. So we've got the rainbow view, which enables you to kind of highlight certain frequencies with color. And I've got my favorite one set there at the moment, although it's not really gonna show much um, for this particular demonstration. Uh, but I've got it set to highlight 2K in blue and 8K in red. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of these. Some other people have done them as well. Um, so, for example, there's a sibilance detection, uh, which shows, you know, the areas, main areas of sibilance in yellow. We've got some of mine, which are just target of 8K. So everything's kind of all purpley and then, you know, it'll show. And uh, there's one that Alberto did, which is showing the tones from the Spectrum tape guide, which is actually really quite amusing. For those of us that had uh, Spectrums back in the day, you probably can still hear that sound in your head. Um, but I'll put it back to, oh, and of course, we can also uh, just make it look quite nice, you know, by highlighting. You can set these all up yourself. It's actually very easy. You just double click on a part and you can change the color of that particular frequency area. So let's say 2K, we want it to be yellow. We can move it over to, we'll do that yellow there. Uh, oops, I missed it. There we go. And now you can see if I close this down, anything that's in is around the 2K mark will highlight as yellow. So it can be useful for, for many things. Uh, so I'm just going to set that back, the little control here. I'm just going to set that back to my 2 and 8K. Uh, we've also got a spectrogram view, which speaks for itself, really. One, two, three. And, you know, again, can be useful for various things. And this also gives us a slightly different display on the meter section here, and then the wavelet view. And underneath that, you can superimpose your actual wave, and you can do that on all of these. You can use this little fader here to superimpose the actual waveform itself. And that button really kind of just highlights the center area when you're using the 
other area, other, you know, the standard controls. So we move over to the Edit tab, and you can see we've got a whole bunch of controls here. You probably also noticed while we're looking at this, you probably noticed these little purple markers which come up, and they are transients which are being picked up by WaveLab, and you can use those to kind of zoom and snap, and you know, you can see the little yellow mark there that's saying transient, and you can set the sensitivity of all that stuff. Uh, again, we went into that on the other video, but just for those of you that have just joined us, um, a quick uh, zoom back out just to show that we are in Nuendo, uh, but we're using WaveLab, the ARA process, all right? So we're still within Nuendo, just to be clear on that. Okay, so we're into edit. So what can we do with edit? Well, let's start from the left here. We can actually redraw samples, and we've got another tool here that enables you to. Uh, let's just show you how that works. Now, on T3, please like and proceed to the gate number two. You get the idea. That's quite straightforward, really. And then we have a time selection. Um, we just leave it like that for now. So, if we want to, for example, Select some ranges. Let's just see what we've got available. So we, you see there that I clicked all. In fact, if maybe we can just uh, extend a little bit. I click all. We've got all, the entire range is selected. We've got presets, so we can select three seconds from the cursor. For example, we can select one second around the cursor, so we've got exactly one second on either side. And we can toggle on and off the ranges. And these are useful because they will be things that we're going to process, which I'll show you now. Um, regions, not to worry right now. Channels, left channel only. Right channel only. But let's... Uh, make it both channels. So let's say we want to do a little fade out in the middle, just as an example. Um, um, we'll select, yeah, I think we'll leave these all as they are. You can get very detailed with the range, um, and you can also extend the range. You can do this with so much detail, and it's difficult to actually find examples of, you know, putting this into practical process. So let's just deselect that. We'll put the cursor around on 14 seconds. And we'll say one second around the cursor. So we've now got... Now at gate number two, all passengers... That little area selected. In fact, let's, let's just mute it. There you go. That's easier. Three is boarding... Passenger... Pretty straightforward. So again, we will undo Control Z, and we're back. Two three is boarding now at gate number two. All passengers, please like this live stream. So what about copying and pasting? Very useful. All passengers, please like this live stream, and then proceed okay. to the departure gate. So let's say we've got a little bit of noise at the end here, and we want to extend that file a little bit. Well, that's, that's... Let's try this. So we go copy. We don't want to copy to system clipboard. We'll just copy within WaveLab itself. We'll keep the crossfading on. And then what we can do now, again, with paste, we've got options to prepend, append, over selected end, overwrite, multiple copies. Let's do multiple copies. And we've got a little dialogue that came up. So let's do five of those. And you'll see now that what we've done is we've basically taken that little bit. Yeah, not perfect. Not perfect. Could have been better. Uh, but that was just a little example. So copy and paste, very, very powerful, actually. Um, again, the crop, mute, and delete, well, they pretty much speak for themselves. But let's just move across. Let's find a little part in the middle, and if we say crop, everything's gone except for that part. Control Z. If we say mute, 
you see what happens. Control Z back to normal and delete will move it and actually join the parts um, together where it was deleted from. So Control Z and we're back to where we started. So that's the edit area. And actually, there's some more stuff that you can do here, um, which um, MS editing mode, mono, or mid side, sorry, mono stereo, mid side editing mode can be done. And what was the other one? Uh, yeah, we can recover old audio modified ranges. So what I'm going to do, because we've spent quite a lot of time going into the basics here, what I'm going to do is with next month's video, I will go into some more of the fine detail stuff. And in fact, I don't think we're going to have time for the Dolby Atmos stuff. So we'll put that all together for next month's video. So a little bit more advanced stuff, and then we won't need to go through how does ARA work and how you do this and how you do that. We'll just do a, a brief five minute recap and then we'll get into it. Right, okay, let's move on to the next part, which is the insert ribbon. So we've already seen the bleep sensor, very, very intuitive. It's boarding now at gate number two. But let's say two. Now at gate number two. So there's two. We can either just use the default or we can bring up, um, there's a high tone and a low tone. I believe you can actually, yeah, there we are. If you double click on the bleep sensor, you can choose. So let's say 440, which as we know is A. Let's make the level a little bit lower. Let's say um, minus, whoops, minus eight. We will put crossfading on by a little bit more of an extreme amount. Let's say 150 milliseconds. And we can then save that. We'll save it as PAP slow bleep. Whoops. There we go. And apply. So now let's have a listen. You can see that we've got the little crossfadey thing that I did. Boarding now at gate number two. All passengers. Now uh, that's not really a standard kind of bleep sensor, uh, but it did show you, you know, how it works. So select the part. Let's go this time to just uh, one of the factory high tone. Uh, Gate number two. That's a, bit, that's a bit more like it. Okay, so there's bleep sensor, control Z, and the silence generator, which again, we have a whole dialogue for that. We can say true silence, ambient sound file. And what we can do with that is we can find a file that has background ambience, and we can use that to insert as silence. Um, again, really useful if you're doing sound design. As you know, total silence is very, very rare in TV and movies. Um, I always look at things like The Office, the US Office, which is, a whether you like it or not, is a really good example of some of the sound design that I know was done after the fact. You would probably not know unless you were into sound design. Most people have no idea that this happens. Um, but these, these tools are all useful for that. So you've always got, even if you have to replace some audio or some voice, having that background noise is useful. Okay, so we don't need to go more into that one. Silence generator, and that is one I think also that we'll look at in a bit more detail um, in the next video. So bleep sensor and silence, um, the spectrum button. Yeah, we've got a whole load of stuff that we can do there. Again, it's not spectral layers, but there are things you can do. So you can see, let's, Maybe, um, yeah, let's, let's just move across from where we were. So we've, we're into process now. Right, so this is, this is all super useful. Again, you can see these transients here. We can adjust the gain by whatever amount you choose. And we also have the ability to choose our own. So again, let's just 
say, down by three, and you can see the entire file. And we can also open a window to edit an envelope to change the level. And again, useful stuff. So here's the little window, and look at that. Zoom in a little bit, mega zoom on that one. And you can see what we can do here is we can make our little points. See here, must remember to zoom back out again. So we can do all that, look, and we can apply that. Close the window. Again, all can be saved as presets as well if there's a particular thing that you like. And let's zoom back to the full screen and we'll play that. Smegville Airways Flight 123 is boarding now at gate number two. All passengers, please like this live stream and then proceed to the departure gate. Now, you might be thinking, well, we can do that in innuendo, but you can, but it's not as precise. And to be honest, it can be very fiddly. And those of you that, that work with sound design, fair enough. But where this is really useful for me is actually with music, actually vocal. Um, it's a well-known fact, I guess, that one of the secrets to getting a nice consistent vocal is not so much using loads of compression and blah, 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 but actually automation. And even DSing, you know, you can do such fine tuning, it's worth going through the vocal track with something like this and really honing in on all those level changes until you don't need to hit that compressor so hard. You know, I'm sure some of you will disagree with that, maybe, but again, that's what works for me. And I find that now WaveLab is available in Uendo, I find myself jumping to this for, for that, actually, probably one of my number one things to do. Okay, uh, let's go back. So we will undo what we've just done. And that actually removed the entire extension. Never mind, we'll just add it back again. Okay, so we're still in the process area. We've had a look at envelope. Re remove DC offset. I think you may, yeah, probably find there isn't any. This was something that used to happen a lot more in the older days. Um, again, not going to go into it now. There's no need. So we have a level normalizer. And again, useful. Let's go to EBUR128. And you can see we've now normalized the file to that, which is super handy. Panning, again, we have equal loud loudness and equal peaks. So you're not really going to find Again, yeah, there's this not really much that that's going to do to this particular file. Time stretching. So we've got time stretch and pitch shift and so on within Nuendo, but again, useful. So we've got the pitch lost effect, which is a factory preset. Let's have a listen. Smegville Airways Flight 123 is boarding now again. Okay. But if we, for example, wanted to do something a little bit more interesting, you double click again, we have a separate window we can bring up and we can play around with that to whatever degree. Showing you the range here, overall range, of course. So we make the range quite extreme and apply that. And let's see what we've got. Smegville Airways Flight 123. Uh, we've got resample, reverse. So let's actually just um, let's let's remove this so that I don't. You know, we'll let's remove the extension and we'll put it back again. So we know we're at. At, back at scratch, and then we can just do reverse. Uh, let's reverse a part of it. Again, something that has to be done quite often. Smegville Airways Flight 123. So we don't like 
the word Smegville Airways. We don't want it to hear that, but you don't want to change the length of the track. We just do a little reverse on it and off you go. Super useful. Now then, click Control Z and we're back to normal. That's great news. Invert phase, well, that does what it says on the tin. You can see it happening as well. Um, we then have various, uh, we've got the tweaker and the tone uniformer. Um, they don't actually, as far as I know, they're not active in our, uh, at the moment. And then, of course, we can swap the left and right channels. All right, so let's just make Smith sure we're all... Flight 123 is boarding now at gate number two. All passengers... Okay, let's move on. So, correction. A lot of stuff on here, and I did try this um, obviously earlier on when I was preparing for this, and I'm struggling to actually find a file that's got enough errors in it. So I think, um, again, what we do is we add this one onto the list of you know more advanced things that we can do in next month's video because uh, I need to find some source that needs correcting. Um, and we are nearly out of, out of time. So we'll leave the correction section. There's a lot of stuff you can do here. And this, of course, is stuff that really you can only do in, in WaveLab. It can't really be done in, in uh, Nuendo at all. So the spectrum, we said we'd get back to that one. Um, the analysis, I, I think this will be the final thing that that we'll look at today. Um, I think we might have brushed upon this last time. So let's have a, using the same file, let's have a 3D, and there it is. And I think we can move, yeah, this is how we move that one around. So here we have the time along the bottom. You can see that. And we've got the frequency. And basically, if we turn that so the time is kind of moving away from us like that, you can actually see exactly what frequencies are going on. So that's really intriguing, actually. So we'll close that down. We've got global, global analysis. And this one allows you to Let's, um, yeah, let's pick, I think I've got a reset, but let's just restore it to factory and we'll hit analyze. And again, you can see there's a lot of detailed info about that specific part, including some EBU stuff, RMS pitch, we can find, although it probably won't because it's not a pitched part. DC offset and of course errors. And are we going to find any errors on this one? Find possible glitches? I don't think we will. Yeah. Again, this could be something that we could look at. And then the visual analysis, which of course is really the PS de resistance when it comes to visual stuff. Um, Let's have a look at that. So we do analyze. And if I move this down, you can see, actually let's move it up a little bit. You can see that we've got all these different things. Let's say uh, you just wanted to look at true peaks or RMS loudness is a popular one. So we'll turn all these off and we'll go for curve and hotspots. And there is your RMS loudness. Um, really handy for detailed sound design, mixing, film and TV stuff. Um, you know how it is these days, I, I guess some of you guys will anyway, how picky and how important certain areas are when it comes to things like loudness and, and what have you. So there's a lot of options there. Um, if I leave that on the screen while we just click, I'll put it over here so you can see it and you can see what's happening. 
there's integrated loudness, there's momentary, and we've got hot spots or curve again for that. There's your momentary loudness. Loudness range, which is a kind of a faded um, area. Short term loudness. And then we've got the display ranges over here. So it's really quite a, I would say, an advanced way of viewing your file. You can change all the colouring as well. I mean, if we go back again, let's go back to RMS. You can change the colouring of RMS. So for me, actually, I, I thought I had a preset, but it's not there. For me, RMS would probably be like a dark red, so R for red, you know, it's one of those things, just a mental association. So to finish off in this particular, um, we've not applied anything yet. So let's just go back and let's, uh, we can turn off the analysis, by the way. Uh, we'll just turn it off like that for now. And we can also here um, show and hide the edit indicators. I, I missed that earlier on. And yeah, okay, there's nothing to do on this particular waveform. So let's just quickly go back. We'll go to process. Um, imagine that we want that lady to sound like she's just walking away at the end. So we'll select the end of the file. Actually, we'll do a edit and we'll do a fade out. So now we play that file. Smegville Airways Flight 123 is boarding now at gate number two. All passengers, please like this live stream and then proceed to the departure gate. Okay. So as I showed you right at the start, we can now either, we can just close that editor and play it in Nuendo like itself. Like this live stream and then proceed to the departure gate. So, so it's still there almost like a plugin, but if we're really happy with that, what we do then is we go extensions and we go make extension permanent. And now, once again, we're back to the regular audio editor, but if we listen to that file. And then proceed to the departure gate. You see that the fade out happened. And then proceed to the departure gate. At the end. All passengers, please like this live stream and then proceed to the departure gate. Okay. I think, uh, I think that will be, whoop, I'm tangled up here. I think that'll be the, uh, the end of this one. We spent a bit of time going through the features and showing what some of them can do. And hopefully what I'm gonna do next month is go into a bit more detail with some of those more complex features because as you can imagine um you know like the the correction stuff it's going to take quite a while to go through just that one feature so i wanted to keep this stream down to around about an hour as we normally do uh, i had quite a few people mention you know try to keep them within that frame i know we can watch them all back later but that's what i like to do so we've got two or three quite big things and we've got Dolby Atmos as well we'll do next month going to show you how that works and also show you how um, you can work with Dolby Atmos within Wavelab itself as well um, external editor support from within the ARA extension yeah that was one thing that I've just seen on my list here that I missed again let's do that one next month all right guys uh, thanks so much if you're watching this back by the way um, thanks for sticking with us, you know, uh, all the chapter markers will be there within the next couple of days and uh, good to have a few of you with us and thanks a lot of course to Terry for moderating the chat and I'll see you really soon. Have a super mega large day or evening, wherever you are. Thanks for joining us. Cheers.